Welcome back everyone. So far, we've had a look at authentication with the next auth package. We learned about authenticating client side, server side, as well as API routes, which are essential to any Next.js app that you might build. What might sometimes also become essential is persisting users in a database. In our application, we ensure the users need to have a GitHub account to sign in to the application. But we are not really storing that user information for later. Perhaps to send out a newsletter, promo emails, or some sort of marketing content. For all such scenarios, we do need the user data in a database. But luckily for us, the next auth package can be used with any database. And not just that, there is built-in support for MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQL Server, MongoDB, and SQLite. In this video, we're going to learn how to connect with MongoDB to persist user data after they've signed into the application. If MongoDB isn't your choice of database, feel free to skip the database setup part and dive into the second half where we write the code needed to connect our application with the MongoDB instance. So for our first part, let's set up a MongoDB cluster that we can connect to. To do that, in Google, type MongoDB Atlas and click on the first link. Sign up with either Google or an email address. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. The process is pretty straightforward, but let me quickly walk you through the steps. After signing up, you need to accept the terms and conditions. Then enter your organization name, a project name, and your preferred language. You can also skip that page if you wish to by clicking on a button at the bottom of the screen. Now you might see a different page to mine, but now I'm gonna click on build a database. Here, I'm gonna select the free tier and click on create. You'll need to pick a provider and a region. You can leave the rest of the page as it is and click on create cluster. Now this will take a few minutes. Once the setup is done, you should have a screen similar to mine. Once the cluster is created, we need to add a new database user. So on the side nav, click on database access and then add new database user. Here, enter a username and password. I'm going to leave this as Vishwas UN and Vishwas PW. You can enter credentials of your own choice. Next, on the side nav, click on network access and then add IP address. Here, click on allow access from anywhere and confirm. And that completes our MongoDB setup. Now for part two, we need to add the code in our Next.js application. We are going to add the MongoDB package. So yarn add MongoDB. Next, we are going to add the MongoDB related configuration in our .env.local file. First, we have the username and password. So db underscore user is equal to Vishwas un and db underscore password is equal to Vishwas pw. Next, we need the connection string. So go to databases and click on the connect button. Here, select connect your application and copy the URL. Back in VS Code, 
db underscore url is equal to paste the connection string. In the connection string, we need to use the variables we have defined above. So instead of Vishwas un dollar db underscore user and instead of password dollar db underscore password. Also, the default database name is set to my first database, which we can rename as next auth db. And this completes our step one. For step two, we add a few more keys in the next auth options. So open pages, API, auth, and next auth.js. In this catch all route, after providers, we add a key called database and we set this to the connection string. So process.env.db underscore URL. When we specify a database though, next auth will automatically track session state in the database. Well, that is one way to manage state but I prefer using JWTs. So we specify another key, session, which is an object, and we set JWT to true. So we are asking next auth library to use JWT for session management and not database. This of course is different from persisting users in the database. Now when we do set JWT to true, we also need to specify a secret. So we add another key, JWT, which is an object, and we set secret to any random string. If you have a cat, you can probably let it walk on your keyboard. Now this value is used for key generation, which we don't have to worry about right now. And with that, we have our part two done. Let's now save the files and test this out in the browser. First, in MongoDB cluster, I want you to take a look at collections. So click on browse collections. And you can see that we don't have any. Let's go back to VS Code and restart the dev server. So you're on dev. And now if we click on sign in, we do have an error. If I go back to VS Code, we have an error, optional dependency MongoDB found, but version four did not satisfy constraint version three. Now I'm guessing MongoDB was updated recently. So let's fall back to the older version and see if this works open package.json and change mongodb 3.5.9. Let me run yarn install again. If we now restart the server, head back to the home page and click on sign in. It works. If I go to MongoDB cluster and click on refresh, on the left hand side, you can see the next auth DB is created. And within the database, we have two collections, accounts and users. Both are automatically managed by the next auth package. We have the accounts collection which contains data from the provider, which is GitHub. And we also have the users collection, which contains data that we see in the session object client side. If I open the console, you can see the same session object right here. So we have successfully persisted user data session information as well as 
provider information. Now I want to quickly address the MongoDB versioning. Like I mentioned, MongoDB has updated to version 4 and the next auth package might be a bit behind with integrating the changes. Depending on when you're watching the video, you may or may not encounter the error that we have seen in this video. Either ways, you should know what to do about it. Also, like I mentioned earlier, if NoSQL and MongoDB is new to you, feel free to pick a database of your own choice. The library has documentation for all of them. But hopefully this video has given you an idea of what is possible in terms of connecting with the database. Alright, there is one last bit of information that I want to cover, which we will do so in the next video. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.